Hi, I'm David Fry, standing in front of the world-famous Haystack Rock on the North Oregon coast, where I'm about to lead you on a tour of the vibrant art galleries of Cannon Beach. Join us in the 20th annual Spring Unveiling Arts Festival here in one of America's greatest art towns. Dragonfire Gallery has been a mainstay of contemporary Northwest art since 2001, featuring affordable, original art from over 100 regional artists. With its exciting array of paintings, sculpture, ceramics, lighting, jewelry, wood, blown and fused glass, Dragonfire truly offers a feast for the senses. This is the gallery's 19th spring unveiling. Hi, my name is Eva Lantella. I'm the owner of Dragonfire Gallery. I want to welcome you to a very exciting lineup of unveilings this year. We are starting with Kelly Howard, blown glass artist from the Oregon coast. My name is Kelly Howard and I'm the glass artist this year at the Spring Unveiling. Um, my work is known for using layers of color and causing lots of texture and reactions, chemical reactions in the color. I've been working glass about 20 years and uh, some of the pieces that we've brought, that I brought this year are a bunch of new table lamps and some really fun new chandeliers that we've never had before. So um, I hope you enjoy those. Um, my work is known for that texture and ocean waves in the glass that I draw into the glass. And um, some of the other things I've brought are these wonderful lotus flowers that have really helped me get through this time and gives me hope for the future and knowing that we can rise out of this muck that we are in. Next, we are unveiling Chuck Gumpert, his latest series of abstract impressionism. This is Pacific Conservatory. Whether exploring the intertidal regions of my Puget Sound neighborhood or the dramatic complexity of the Oregon coast, I am continually aware of and inspired by the exhibition of abundant life and visual stimuli along our Pacific Northwest shores. The shore is a magical conglomeration of biological diversity and a dynamic composition of colors, movement, shapes, and sounds, which we could all take more time to observe and conserve. This is mystical. I'm lucky to live with an avid gardener who has created stunning layered plantings of many varieties and colors. It's an amazing composition of millions of greens, highlighted with curated combinations of florals. It's like living in a Monet. I'm also mystified by all the other life forms that travel through that composition. I'll sit in one spot, call it air traffic control, and observe the birds and insects dart and weave among the branches and blooms, bumbling about their own solo show or carefully choreographed in some unseen system. I'm very excited to now show you the latest works by Greg Navratil. My acrylic paintings are done in a somewhat sharpened impressionism. The work depicts nature, and the bright colors turn these familiar scenes into something from a dream. I hunt for paintings in natural areas with my camera. Nature inspires my photographs. My photos inspire my paintings. I'm most inspired by the fullness of the forest, with its mazes of trees and dense canopies of branches. Back in a studio, photos are selected that will become paintings. Grid patterns are laid out on the canvas. This sets the stage for paint application. Acrylic colors are selected that give the work an impression of vibrancy. The grids on the canvas are painted with accurately placed tiny shapes of color reminiscent of impressionism. I do not strain after the exact local colors. The highly chromatic colors offered by acrylic are pushed to the limit. Colors are applied in pure hues using dispensers. Your eyes mix the colors from a distance. There is a balance between abstraction and realism, all in the hope of creating something beautiful. Icefire Glassworks is built on long-term relationships with artists who love the Pacific Northwest and in whose work we believe. The gallery represents Jim Kingwell, Suzanne Kinlan, Michelle Kaptur, Mark Gordon, Kathleen Sheard, Tony Parker, Steve Craig, Robert Tamis, Laura Bowker, and Wendy Harmon. Jim founded Ice Fire Glassworks in 1975 and has operated his hot shop and gallery in Cannon Beach since 1991. At Ice Fire Glassworks, we present the work from artists whose careers we believe in. Our ideas and designs come from a deep understanding 
of the unique abilities of glass itself. For centuries, glass workers have developed tools and technique leading us to the current time when we are able to make exceptionally high quality glass well above historic norms. We bring the focus of unique skill sets and concepts to our work. One pair of hands will control the making of each piece from start to finish. When choosing to live with glass art, the relationship includes knowledge of the handmade quality of an object that represents interaction of human endeavor and the Earth's resource. This year, we focus on the work of our four glass blowers, Mark Gordon, Michelle Kapter, Suzanne Kindland, and myself, James Kingwell. Each artist remains a student for life, continuously exploring new ground to both broaden and deepen our own relationships with glass. Mark has been exploring the possibilities of carving glass with water-cooled diamonds after creating his unique blown forms. Michelle taps her own deep relationship with pictograph and petroglyph imagery as well as her sense of very refined form. Hi, my name is Michelle Kapter and I wanted to talk to you about a series of glass pieces that I make that incorporate petroglyphs or rock art from mostly around the United States. I was first introduced to rock art by my mom as a child when we would travel the desert in California. She'd point out all the beautiful images and being a, a young artist, they really spoke to me. They seemed important to her and I was a kid and some of my images looked a lot like that. Since then, I've traveled many places in a search to see different rock art made by different peoples. Oregon, Baja, Guatemala, Mexico. Ultimately, some of the most exciting art I saw was in France in the, the caves at Lascaux and, and also in Africa. These images really speak to me. They, they speak to me of a, a different way of life by a people who lived more in tune with the earth. To me, they speak of news, hope, um, how we can leave our mark. Some of them appear to be prayers. All of that, it's a mystery when I, when I stand in front of a panel and I look at it and I try to imagine the person who was, was there, maybe in good weather, maybe in bad, probably with a, a hammer stone, maybe with some kind of pigment, and, and they were moved to make this image on a rock or in a cave. And, and I question, why did they do that? <laughs> lots of different reasons, lots of research has suggested many reasons for why people make art. And it's the same question for us now. Why do I make art? Um, in part, it's just because I'm human and I have to. I guess I want to leave my mark. Um, it's a form of meditation. It's a kind of prayer. It's a blessing. To see it is a blessing and to make it is a blessing. Our clients will often be drawn to the work of a single artist because something resonates with their individual approach to design. Overall, we offer objects that should be a joy to live with and hope that you accept them into your home environment with satisfaction. To inquire further about the work, contact us at 503-436-2359 or visit our new website icefireglassworks.com Hi, my name is Scott Johnson. Welcome to Cannon Beach Gallery. The gallery is in Midtown, which is a little different than downtown, and uh, we're very specific to this area. The gallery's been around for a good long while, and um, it feels a little bit more like a museum than uh, one of your 
normal galleries in downtown. Each month we have shows that occur here that uh, there, some of them are invited from outside of the Kennedy Beach area, but we also have invitationals that are focused on local talent. Um, right now we have three artists that are essentially Portland-based, and one of them is uh, Pam Green. This is one of her pieces. She's also known on the North Coast for uh, her ocean pieces that are uh, focused around some of the areas that we know here on the North Coast. Uh, Therese Wiles, one of our other artists, and we'll be showing you more of her work too in the back. We have one other artist that's featured this month, Mel McRoberts, and we'll be showing you some of his. Mel's newest piece is one that really feels like autumn, but it's lovely. He's worked on it very long, and uh, the piece shows it. Uh, it's complicated in, in the leaf patterns. The piece has a lot of photorealism to it. I love the colors in it. Uh, this is a piece that he spent a long time doing and I really feel like it's, it shows. It's a legacy piece for him. Um, one of his other pieces is right here, and it does, it shows a, a sense of his awareness of the landscape. This one, on the other hand, is so, so tight and so colorful. It really takes, zooms you right into to being in that pile of leaves. Hi. My name is Mel McRobert. I have lived in Oregon all my life, and I love the beautiful Northwest. As an artist, you don't need to look very far to find a good subject to paint. My hope is to invite you into my paintings so you can say I want to be there right now. Over here we have one of Pam's uh, oceanic pieces. She does marvelous waves and uh, Mel's uh, really tight, beautiful landscapes are, are paired with that. Really proud of this show. It's been, it's been an experience just to hang a different show every month and, and show how diverse the, the artists are here in the gallery. Um, we have a a uh, demonstrating painter here. Her work is uh, featured primarily in journal form and uh, she's actually creating some of the some of the paintings for for the journal now. She's got a floral floral uh, composition to work with and uh, we often support artists to come and paint here, demonstrate here. For me Cannon Beach Gallery has been a place that I've come to really since I was a young man and getting an experience of both the gallery as an institution where there's always new art that comes in monthly and getting to know the different directors that have been part of this place and given, given this place their own flavor. We're also connected deeply with the uh, coffee shop next door which serves up soup and people come often every day to experience that and get fed and then come over here and get further fed. Thanks again for coming by Cannon Beach Gallery. I'm Scott Johnson, the director. You'll always find new work here in the gallery and please come to our online shop CannonBeachArts.org, where you'll see a lot of jewelry and a number of wonderful small pieces along with the current show. Um, we're here from 11 to 4, Wednesday through Sunday, and uh, come get a cup of coffee and visit for a while. Thanks. Bye-bye. White Bird Gallery was established in 1971. One of the original galleries in Cannon Beach, it has a pioneering role in the arts culture of the town. Housed centrally in a historical building, 
the gallery is one of the first to fully integrate fine art and studio craft. Whitebird continues to highlight original and innovative works of art and its glass, ceramics, and art jewelry are mixed with decorative and functional pieces in a variety of media. Welcome to Whitebird Gallery. Our spring group show features new collections of artists using innovative mixed media styles, including altered book sculpture, paintings and jewelry made of resin and found objects, ceramic and metal sculptures, and expressive paintings. Today we are going to unveil a large triptych by Christopher Mathy, as well as new collections by our featured artists. Hi, this is Christopher Mathy. This piece is called Dreamy Day Sailing. It's a 48 by 72 inch triptych. It's mixed media, mostly acrylic, with charcoal, aquarelle, and ink on top. It's varnished with a UV protection. This piece was started before the quarantine and finished during the quarantine. It took a little over two months to paint. I tried to keep this piece light and airy. I wanted it to be full of hope and happiness and joy. I like paintings that have a lot of movement. I find that painting the water and the sky and sailboats fits me perfectly. I hope that as you look at this piece, it reminds you that times ahead will be better. I also hope that you will support the galleries of Cannon Beach and all the artists who are trying to create inspiring, hopeful work. Cheers. My name is Valerie Severy. I'm an artist living in Denver, Colorado. I create book sculptures, meaning that I take old books um, and then I an exacto style knife. I cut the cover, then I go page by page by page to reveal different text and images to create a visual narrative of the written stories within. And then add little black and white paintings, although I've started to venture out into adding a little bit of color. And then typically there is some sort of in the piece as well. My work is very much based in nostalgia. Um, these pieces that I did create for Whitebird Gallery do have some personal connections to my own sense of nostalgia. Um, Beatrix Potter was a huge influence when I was growing up. Um, I used to be very much into collecting leaves and pressing flowers and who doesn't love um, some good folk stories as well as mermaids. It's important to me to honor the author's original artistic intent and that's why um, whatever you see that I've created visually does have that tie back into that narrative. I hope you enjoy my work and enjoy these stories. My name is Alan and this is Whitebird Gallery. You can find us at whitebirdgallery.com. Thank you. Welcome to our gallery. For Spring Unveiling 2020, we are happy to be presenting the works of Carla O'Connor. The human form is the touchstone of all my work. I was classically trained in anatomy and spent years and years drawing before ever being even allowed to paint the figure. It's what I know best, what interests me the most, and compels me to work. I feel strongly that it is my obligation as an artist to reach the viewer on a deeper level 
than just recording the figure perfectly with little else. My goal is to combine the three-dimensional human form with the two-dimensional abstract surround and spark the imagination and move the viewer emotionally. I would like to expand a little on my combining the abstract element with the realistic human form. One of my major influences in my work is Nikolai Fetchin, who was a master of combining the two opposite elements. The introduction of realism helps the viewer connect at first glance and hopefully ignite their own imagination. I strive for a focused stylistic context where there is a sense of individual identity in my choices of color, light, shape, and value. My figure paintings are not portraits or idealistic forms, but images in paint on paper as I see them in that moment. Thank you for watching our presentation of Carlo O'Connor's work. This unveiling is our last event with Cannon Beach Gallery Group, as Imprint Gallery is relocating to Astoria and rebranding as Brumfield Gallery. Our new gallery location is 1033 Marine Drive in Astoria and opens on August 8th. In the meantime, if you're interested in any of the work that you've seen here today, they are available from our new website, brumfieldgallery.com, or by emailing info at brumfieldgallery.com. You're standing outside the Images of the West Gallery by Randall J. Hodges. Come on in. Thank you for watching the Images of the West Spring Unveiling by Randall J. Hodges. Let's get right to it unveiling a three-piece set of Antelope Canyon. 20 by 30 metal pieces shown here. This is the ghost. This is called Antelope Colors. And finally, Sandfall and Light Beam. The three-piece set goes for $11.97, but it's available in all sizes and formats. Let's unveil Rialto Beach Olympic National Park in a beautiful framed Lumachrome HD acrylic. Details in this are out of this world. Shown here in a 30 by 45 frame Lumachrome for 
Let's unveil Sunset Summit Lake, Mount Rainier. Beautiful metal print. Shown here on a 30 by 45 metal, 995, but available in all formats and sizes. Wildflowers in Mount St. Helens. This is my 2021 calendar cover winner. Beautiful metal print. Great detail. 30 by 45, 999. Unveiling fall colors in the Lower Lewis River. What a beautiful waterfall, shown here on amazing Lumachrome HD acrylic. 30 by 45, 15.99, available in all sizes and formats. Let's unveil Sunset Broken Top, Central Oregon Sparks Lake. Look at this beautiful cloud at sunset, once in a lifetime capture. Shown on Lumachrome HD acrylic, 30 by 45, 15.99. Let's unveil Wenatchee River and Fall, Wenatchee National Forest. River coming right at you, beautiful fall color. Excellent detail, shown on a 20 by 30 metal, 399. Let's unveil Sunset from Secret Beach. This is the Southern Oregon coast at its best. Beautiful Sunset, shown here on metal. 20 by 30 for 399. Available in all sizes. Sunset or the Tulip Fields, Rosengard. This is Skagit Valley, Washington. Love those tulips. Shown here on metal in a 24 by 36 for $5.99. Let's continue with winter sunset over Crater Lake, Wizard Island. I had to snowshoe backpack in and camp for three days to get this beautiful shot. Shown in amazing detail on Lumachrome HD Acrylic, 1599, 30 by 45. Let's unveil Sunrise Reflections and Haystack Rock right here in beautiful Cannon Beach. Shown on Lumachrome, beautiful morning, peaceful, no one on the beach to capture this reflection. 30 by 45 Lumachrome, 1599. Keep it going with the purple hyacinth row through those tulips back at the Rosengard Garden. Spring at its best in the beautiful garden. Shown on amazing Lumachrome HD acrylic in a 24 by 36, 9.99. Thank you so much for watching the virtual unveiling of the Images of the West Gallery. All pieces shown are available in any size or format. We sure appreciate you watching. I'm Randall J. Hodges. Here's all our contact info. Feel free to reach out with any questions. Thank you so much. We look forward to seeing you in person next time. Your visit to Northwest by Northwest Gallery begins on the sidewalks of Cannon Beach with public bronze sculptures by its artists, including Tufted Puffins by Georgia Gerber and a Delicate Balance by Wayne Shaver. In front of the Spruce Street Gallery, Ivan McLean's Red Sphere Sculpture defines the garden. They are also featured inside the gallery, along with Don Stastny's bronze sculptures, Angelita Sermon's glass pieces, Hazel Schlesinger's oil paintings, Christopher Burkett's fine art photography, and much, much more. Hi, we want to welcome you and thank you for visiting with Northwest by Northwest Gallery. We are doing a virtual spring unveiling. We all missed you at the last spring unveiling. That was gonna be our 20th. We will be going next year, hopefully, and we will have galleries being open this month of June. This is our introduction to that, and we welcome you back to Cannon Beach. Hi, my name is Joyce Lincoln. My husband, Robert, and I have owned Northwest by Northwest Gallery for over three decades in beautiful Cannon Beach, Oregon. Today I have the pleasure of introducing to you Ivan McLean, a wonderful sculptor, Ivan. Yes, and my name is Ivan, I'm a Portland sculptor, and I've been very lucky to be with Joyce and Bob out here at Northwest by Northwest Gallery. This is one of the pieces I have out in front, stainless steel, I call it reinvention. And what's kind of fun about this is that you can pivot it, so like no matter where you are and you want to change the view, and this sculpture has a lot of different views. So this is one of the ways I was able to allow people to change it and enjoy it from different views. 
Ivan McLean is well known for his spheres, which are crafted by hand. Ivan, can you tell us a little bit about the spheres and uh, the sizes? And Well, some years ago, I started doing these with a little scrap metal, and then over time, people really enjoyed them. So over the last 10 or 11 years, I've made hundreds of them in all different sizes, up to 14 feet diameter, all different kinds of metal from stainless steel, powder coated, or tin. And they've been very fun, and you can, they're easy to roll along and position them anywhere you want. And they are freehand design, which is quite extraordinary. We also have a new collection by Ivan McLean of marble sculpture. Ivan works in kiln form glass and bronze as well. Hello, welcome again. This is Hazel Schlesinger, a wonderful painter. Uh, if you've met Hazel, she's a friend. Her name is Hayes. She's known as Hayes. She's a wonderful teacher as well, especially for plein air. You can see her paintings around the world in different media. And now I'm going to introduce you to a Cannon Beach native, Hayes Schlesinger. I'm an expressionist painter. I'm a plein air painter and an abstract painter. I actually just love to paint. I paint, um, like for instance, this one was done just down here on um, Elk Creek, and it's a plein air painting. I do a lot of plein air painting with groups, and if I can't finish a painting, I bring it into my studio, I take photos, I can work off a photograph and uh, finish the painting, or take this as a, as a sort of a studio painting and turn it into a larger painting. I take abstractions of what is actually what we see, see through a viewfinder or a camera lens. I don't necessarily um, try to make things so accurate. So this one I call Northern Lights over and this large. This is Don Stastny, a Cannon Beach local and an internationally recognized architect who's also a bronze sculptor and a gifted painter. These are narrative sculptures and I'd like Don to tell you a little bit about them. Don Stastny. We, uh, when I uh, start on a, a work, I, I really deal with words, paint, and clay. And uh, by taking those three things together and manipulating them, I begin to tell stories about what a piece is about. And the importance to me of, of a piece is that people don't just take it home and look at it, but they engage with it. And it gives them opportunities to be really introspective about themselves and learn a little bit about the work that they, or what their lives are about. I'd like to uh, introduce you to a very special friend of ours, John Moeller of John Moeller Woodworking, who has designed some extraordinary stands for extraordinary display and this is a very rare gift. These are totally unique and very original. John, thank you so much for your wonderful imagination and great craftsmanship. You're more than welcome. You're more than welcome. We like to show our pride in our work and everything that you see has been re uh, repurposed from the wood out of uh, people's yards that don't want the trees anymore or they have to be removed because of a hazard. We don't like to see any of the wood go to waste. Um, so kind of our gift to you and show off the beautiful artwork that you have at the gallery. Thank you. Outstanding. Outstanding. Thank you. Yep. It's wonderful. You bet. Jeffrey Hall has been a Cannon Beach artist for more than 40 years. He specializes in original watercolor and oil paintings of the Oregon coast, as well as limited edition gicle prints and lithographs. Since 1987, his spacious gallery has been filled with his work capturing the beauty and moods of the places where water joins the land. Jeffrey Hall Gallery is a founding member of the Cannon Beach Gallery Group and was one of the original galleries that organized spring unveiling 20 years ago. Hi, I'm Jeffrey Hull. We're here at the Jeffrey Hull Gallery in Cannon Beach for spring unveiling. And we're going to do a virtual version this year. So I will be unveiling uh, paintings for you all to see via video. This first painting is an oil painting 
I've been working this uh, winter and spring on paintings that normally um, have to kind of take my time with because they're a little more involved. This one is called Good Morning Breakers Point. And this is E. Cola Park off in the background here, uh, the sand dunes of Breakers Point. And what really struck me with this was the dramatic lighting. It was such a beautiful morning as I went for a walk along the river edge there. Took a bunch of pictures, knew it would be a painting that would be something I would enjoy if I could get it right. So I worked hard to get it right. So that's Good Morning, Breakers Point. This one is called Late, Late Sunset. And it's tricky, this is another oil painting. It's tricky with uh, low light paintings because it's a very fine line between being colorful and just being garish. So you try to walk right up to that line and, and hopefully have something that has a nice glow about it. So the trick here was to get all that color in very low light. And then the last little bit thing I did was to add the moon, which is the only bright white in the whole painting. And then this one is called Limit. And it's, this is unusual for me. I generally don't paint uh, this sort of subject matter, razor clams on the beach. Um, but it was a beautiful morning. The light was warm. I think there was probably a little bit of smoke in the air. It was, um, I think, September of last year. So there was a warmth about the light that was a uh, radiator, uh, part of the uh, drama and the beauty of it. And so I uh, dug these clams and then like we do, if you're a clam digger, you dump them back out on the sand and count them to make sure you have all that you're allowed and not any, you know, not too many. So I just arranged them a little bit and took some pictures and then painted from it, uh, from those pictures this, uh, this spring when I had time to work on it. Okay, this next painting is a watercolor that we put into a Jacle print. We published as a Jacle print. It's called As the Crow Flies. And this is uh, a moment of inspiration. I walked into a room and the leaves out through this window were glistening in the sun. Uh, and I just thought it would make a great painting. And so uh, the, the uniqueness to this is I painted in a wet on wet style, meaning the paper is wet and the, the paint, the brush is full of wet water, wet paint. And so you get soft diffused edges and there's a, a certain amount of bleeding that happens. It's just a very nice soft look. After that's dry, then I can come back and do the darker, more detailed work um, and ultimately ending up where the crow was the last thing that I put in. So as the crow flies, uh, watercolor put into print. I love to paint and live here in Cannon Beach and on the North Coast. It's, the beauty is a daily treat and Inspiration is so abundant. It's just everywhere I look. And to get to do something that you love in life is a blessing, but when you get to do something creative, it's especially nice. So being able to make a living as an artist and have a gallery here where we can show my work year round is just a wonderful way to live life. I'm Jeffrey Hull. You're here at the Jeffrey Hull Gallery in Cannon Beach for Spring Unveiling 2020 and we are offering the paintings that I've unveiled and the prints through our website. They will be available once this video goes live, as well as in the gallery. You can stop by here and see them and um, purchase whatever might interest you. Hi, I'm Sharon Amber and um, I've been in Cannon Beach for about 35 years and shown my work here that long and had my gallery here for 33 years. And I've been making jewelry as my art for 45 years full time. And before that it was a hobby for oh, so at over 50 years. 
and I love it. And um, uh, this year I've created a whole new line of work that's quite different from anything I've ever done before. And I would say it kind of has an art deco feel and um, maybe some somewhat of a, a Wild West feel to it, to it too. Um, people will, I know you're wondering, now what inspired this? And it's kind of hard to say because when I'm work, when I'm doing the pieces, I don't even know till after they're finished. And there's a um, a moment of mad magic when the casting comes out of the um, ceramic mold, and there's the piece of gold sitting there. And I realize, oh, that reminds me of just seeing my grandma's wedding dress for the first time last month. So this spring, I went to Colorado for about a, a little over a month to see my mom, and I heard all these stories, like uh, granddad, who was a farmer and a cowboy, and how when they did their cattle drive in the spring and the fall, there would be all these different cowboys, not around the same campfire, but around different campfires cooking their own pot of beans because they had uh, all different tastes. So this has come out in my work and I can almost uh, smell his saddle when I uh, look at this one piece of jewelry. Or I can remember what mom said about her childhood and the Christmas gift she got in another piece. So. I heard an artist once say that artists don't tell people what to think, but we tell people how we feel. And so um, these are some works in progress. These are not finished yet, but you can kind of see what I mean about the deco and, you know, here I think of grandma and her old fashioned begonias. And these will resonate with some people and maybe they don't even know how it's resonating with them, but if it resonates with you, then I've done my job. So I consider it uh, quite an honor to be not only making things that are very special for some people, but also for being able to do something I'm passionate about and um, thank you so much for letting me do that. And I would like to also introduce my good friend and neighbor, Lisa Kerr, who has created quite a wonderful body of work this spring to show you. Hi, my name is Lisa Kerr, and I am lucky enough to be in Sharon Amber's gallery. Uh, she is a master jeweler I am not nearly as experienced as Sharon. I've just been making jewelry for about 10 years. Um, and it has been a wonderful experience, very intense the last three or four years. Um, I work primarily in silver with uh, gold accents. And the latest body of work I'm doing has been inspired by traveling around Sicily. And I have I've called it Sato Mare, which means under the sea. And I imagined what it would be like if um, somebody dug up or brought up from under the ocean uh, pieces of jewelry that had been part of a sunken ship or a sunken treasure and what it would look like when it came up from the bottom of the sea. And that's what inspired me to do these works, the Sato Mare from Under the Sea. So I've used um, gold nuggets that I got in Alaska 30 years ago, and I fused them to silver and set them with semi-precious stones like tanzanite and citrine and peridot, and I've set them onto the silver that has the gold nuggets fused to it and then darkened them with a certain process that you use to darken silver and then made them permanently dark. And that gives the feel of being brought up from under the ocean and it also makes the gold accents pop against the dark background. So this is an example of the Satomari pieces that I've done where you can see the silver is darkened and the jewel just 
jumps out at you, the semi-precious stone. It's been a wonderful experience doing this. I just love doing it. I wake up in the morning very excited to get to work. So, and I like love being in Sharon's beautiful store. Okay, one more thing I wanted to say, just as the experiences uh, drive the designs that I make, I also uh, was, I didn't choose to become an artist, it, ch it chose me. And uh, so I actually have a background in math and physics and science in college. And when my mother said, oh, I thought you were going to be an artist, and then I dropped out of college to make jewelry, she has never said, I told you so. And with COVID-19, it was, it really made me think about, well, do I want to retire now? And the answer is no, I never want to retire. And so the store has been completely refurbished, as you see, everything's been renovated and we have screens up to protect you and ourselves, and um, so I'm gonna be here. I'm Sharon Amber, and the name of my store is Jewelry by Sharon Amber, and you can find me on the web at cannonbeachjewelry.com or at sharonamber.com. Specializing in bronze sculpture, Bronze Coast Gallery represents more than 40 talented artists from the Northwest and beyond. Bronze Coast Gallery was founded in 1993 with the belief that education facilitates appreciation, and education is still a daily focus here. Along with classic limited edition bronze sculpture, the gallery features innovative mixed media sculpture and paintings. Today at our virtual spring unveiling, we will be showing two artists who constantly expand their skill level and artistic forms uh, through uh, going past boundaries, expanding the boundaries. Uh, these two gentlemen, the first gentleman will be Dan Chen. Dan is from Eugene, Oregon. Uh, Dan immigrated, was born in China and immigrated with his parents to the U.S. in 1984. Dan also uh, studied, uh, while, uh, studied graphic design and illustration. His professional career has been based on natural and wildlife art in both sculptures and paintings. Uh, Dan, feeling is that Eastern and Western techniques can merge together in the art world, and he does that very effectively. We are going to show his new piece, Joyful Season, and uh, with that, uh, Dan will be saying a few words. I always like to learn new things. Sometimes I look for opportunity, sometimes opportunity look for me. Uh, the fused glass pieces, this is a new technique that I learned. Uh, it's opportunity knocking on my door that uh, I'm trying to learn and combine it with the knowledge I have on other mediums. And I like to push boundaries and like like little kids so when say it's wet paint, don't touch and I'll touch it. So I learned on the job. So as I, this one goes, this series goes, I am basically you know, having fun and learn with what the limits are and what basically uh, what I can do with it. So this is the couple of pieces that I have done. Uh, our second artist that we're happy to unveil a work from is Carrie Henry. Carrie is, lives in Bountiful, Utah, where he was born in that area, moved to New York to study at Pratt University. After 10 years of being in uh, the New York world painting, he decided to move back west. Carrie is constantly experimenting with different non-traditional canvases and materials by using, at, using techniques that both add, are additive and subtractive to the substrate itself. This is uh, his work, Wave Stripes. And we will also hear a few words from, from 
carry as we view the piece. Hi, this is Kerry Henry. I'm trying to uh, create a brand new type of art with these wave series. And in these series, this new wave series, I wanted a very dimensional, like the ocean. I love water and I love Cannon Beach and of course the Oregon coast. And the idea is to create like a wave right on your wall that when you walk around, it shimmers. It's all metallic, non-toxic paint and that it creates a definite movement rather than a typical painting. So I kind of created like a, I call them like sculptures for the wall. Uh, I'm super excited to start this series up for Bronze Coast Gallery and make sure you, you walk around and see how much the colors shimmer and change. Uh, they can go horizontal or vertical, uh, really exciting pieces. Um, I love to have the dimension that really has a nice drop shadow too uh, and it creates such a great presence in a smaller space so they're very very versatile and very easy to hang. I'm Joe Clayton and on behalf of everyone here at the Bronze Coast Gallery, thank you for viewing our virtual spring unveiling. We look forward to seeing you here at the gallery in Cannon Beach. And also, you can visit us at our website, bronzecoastgallery.com. Again, thank you, be safe, and have a great day. The Modern Villa is a contemporary art gallery resting on the rocky shores of Cannon Beach. With works from 10 artists, including Sarah Goodnow, Joseph Cote, Ann Packard, Tom Henderson, David White, George Peru, Micah Crandall Bear, Edward Gurevich, and Clifford Bailey, the gallery contains a diverse selection of original art pieces for sale. Also included is artwork featuring the endless imagination and unique styles and themes from David Jonathan Marshall. Hey everybody, I'm David Jonathan Marshall here at Modern Villa Gallery in June of 2020. And I've just finished off some new paintings. Uh, this is a 36 inch by 36 inch square. It's called Cave Kiss. It is oil on board. So it's right on board and every once in a while I like to paint on board. All the paint just sits right on top of the surface. This is part of a trilogy painting. Uh, Waiting for my ship to come in was the first painting. And then this is the second painting. And it's this couple that have found each other and they went out on the ship because waiting for my ship to come in, they found their ship, they've gone out at sea, and then they've rowed over with a rowboat to shore here. And they found their own private place on the beach and there's a cave and they're kissing. So it's called Cave Kiss and the sun is throwing their shadow here and it's a nice warm day. So that's Cave Kiss. And then there's another painting that I recently finished here called Out of This World. And this is uh, oil on canvas. And I kind of think this is a painting that's kind of like that first kiss where you're, you're dating somebody and it's a real special date and you kiss for the first time and it's like, wow. You know, you just feel like you're you're somewhere else. You're not in this world anymore. It's just so exciting. So I literally created this part of the earth down below and put them out of this world up into the stars and, and uh, they're just enjoying that moment and nobody or nothing is around that can stress them out or destroy their day. So that's out of this world. By the way, that this painting here is a 36 by 48. So this is a new Sarah Goudno painting. It's an abstract floral. And this is called Waltz and Bloom. It is a 36 inch by 60 inch uh, acrylic on canvas. She paints with acrylics. And she puts this nice kind of uh, uh, varnish over the acrylic so it has a nice shine to it. Okay, so we're here at the David White Tsunami Wave. This is an extra large tsunami wave and just got this in from David White. 
It is uh, glass and it's a cobalt blue. He's got some gold flecks that are put throughout the glass inside of here. You can possibly see that with the light coming underneath and, and the lights hitting the side. But there's a little bit of shimmer going throughout this wave. And anyhow, that's, that's probably about a 25 pound tsunami wave there of glass. It's a wonderful piece. And David White signs it right on the back here of every piece. And then moving on to another new painting of mine. This is called My Baby Grand. It is a, another 36 inch by 36 inch. This is oil on canvas. I've got some um, leafing, some gold leafing that is around the hood of the, the piano. I've got rolling keys going on and uh, I've got the feet down here with some gold leafing and what I like about this painting is it's, it's, a, it's a baby grand piano, but I feel like there's just so much movement in it and life in it. And it's just kind of nice to have that around this time right now is something that's positive, happy, and energetic. So it's my baby grand. And moving on to these two, uh, 15 years ago, I did um, Beach Bound. And then there's city bound over here. And these go together. You can buy them separately, but I kind of like to sell them to, uh, to somebody who would want to buy them together. I did these paintings 15 years ago for the Surf Sand Resort Hotel. And so I'm redoing them again because the other ones sold. But they were so popular, I wanted to bring them back and do different colors. So this is beach bound. And you can see here that the little, little haystack rock is off in the distance. Imagine this is Portland and you're shopping around in the streets in Portland and the buildings and, and everything and just enjoying your shopping time in Portland. And then here's the road going out of Portland, this gray road, and it's going through and then there's that tunnel and then there's the forest up here that the road leads to that beautiful forest with all the rivers and brooks and such. And then there's the beach right off in the distance. It's awesome. So that is beach bound. And here is city bound. So what I've done is I've just taken the opposite way, the opposite direction, and just wanted to flip it around. So this was kind of a study for me 15 years ago. And so now you're at the beach and we love the beach because of the, you know, the haystack rock and, and surfing and the, the seagulls that are flying around on the rock. And so what I've done here is I've placed people kind of hovering above the water and looking back at the city and the roadway, the bridges that we have along the coast. And then you're heading through, I kind of, I call these lollipop trees. And so you're heading through the forest here through the tunnel that's over here, and then back to the city here in Portland. And the same stripes that are rolling down through here are rolling down through here. And it's just different landscaping that, uh, that I use in the painting. These are both oil on canvas, by the way, 36 inch by 36 inch. And I put different frames on them just so that people have options to see what different frames look like on them. This piece here is Surrounding Seas and it's part of my bicycle series that's been going on for the last 11 years. And I put this woman on uh, this bicycle here. This is actually my bicycle that I put many of the paintings. And she's perched on a rock that's about, I don't know, five foot tall. It's a long rock and it's at the ocean here. And the, the ocean is rushing in and at high tide, this uh, the ocean wraps around this large rock and you feel like you're surrounded, you're stuck at sea. And um, just for a moment until the water goes back out. But I like the wave action in this. I like the way the sky looks with the simple browns and the, the, the powdery looking clouds. And um, yeah, so this is surrounding seas. This is uh, oil on canvas actually this is a print it's a hannah bell's print the original sold but this is a print it's a i believe it's a 30 inch by 30 inch 
and yeah, surrounding seas. Okay, so now we are coming to a different part of the gallery, and this is the front main entrance of the gallery, and this is called White Forest. I did this painting a number of years back, and this is what's called a hand embellished print. So I've went over this and painted this with oil. It is a print, but it's painted over in certain areas with oil. And so you can see different layers kind of here and there. You can see the lip of, of the paint coming up. And um, here is a Saragudno, a, a brand new Saragudno. And uh, I don't know the name because it's brand new. Just placed up on the wall, but it is a, uh, an original. It's probably a 36 by 36 of palm trees. This is a Cote uh, painting. And this is, uh, I believe that's a hand embellished print as well. Yes, it is because it's got a number on it. Um, this is my painting. It's an original, it's called Blue Sea. It's uh, oil on canvas. Another one of mine that is Vista View. This, this woman is part of the bicycle series and she travels the world and, and uh, stops off at different places. I kind of think this is in uh, uh, Lake Geneva, Switzerland, where she's looking out over the, the lake there. Uh, this is uh, Citron Forest, another one of mine. Um, this is oil on canvas. I normally always paint oil on canvas. Uh, this is uh, Micah Crandall Bear. We just got this in. Have no idea what the name is. Uh, really special piece. He does these modern stripes. Very contemporary. Nice feel to him. Uh, puts different colors together. And this is the last over here. These two are Tom Henderson. He's from Santa Barbara, California. Just a wonderful artist. Wonderful friend. And uh, he's just putting out some wonderful work. They're very vintage feeling. Uh, these are acrylic on canvas, and he does these kind of um, beach scenes or city type scenes. And uh, yeah, they're just wonderful. Anyhow, thanks for being with me. I'm David Jonathan Marshall, and thanks for being here at Modern Villa Gallery. Appreciate it. Thanks for joining us on the first ever virtual Spring Unveiling Arts Festival here in Cannon Beach. We had a great time putting this together for you. We hope you enjoyed it as well. Remember, you can contact any of the galleries if any of the featured pieces appeal to you and you're interested in buying them or just interested in learning more about them. In the meantime, come visit us. Come see our galleries in person, see our artists, see our artwork. We're happy to share that with you. We also have a great community for other things. So, we'll see you soon. Be well.